The root, and he talked about it, the root of so many challenges, struggles, and issues are found in the idea that we're not being intentional and consistent in the way we build love and respect as husbands and wives. Now, here's something else to think about. Uh, Think about this statement as we go through things, especially as we go through this entire series. Men are turned on by what they see, and women are turned on by what they hear. Now, when it comes to dating, think about it. Guys, for us, especially at first, it's all about what she looks like. And that's not being shallow. We just can't, you know, sometimes in the church, we don't want to talk. First of all, we don't want to talk about sex. Second, we don't want to talk about, well, I think she's really good looking. I think he is like, hmm, you know, we don't want to talk about that. Because automatically when you start talking about those things, the church's default system is to start talking about lust and start talking about, and that's not what God intended. Something does happen, but we have to understand that it's more than just a feeling. Thank you, Boston. Some of you don't have any idea what that means, but um, I believe too many times we forget about what happens spiritually during the chase and then once we get married. And, and this is one of my catchphrases, I know, but I'm just going to be completely honest with you. This is one of the areas that sometimes spirituality does not come into it. When you start talking about relationships and dating and sex and marriage, well, sometimes spirituality gets kind of pushed to the side and we kind of, and I understand it because we've been created for relationships. God created us and it's, it's kind of funny in a way and ironic that we've been created for relationships, but sometimes we'll leave God out of the relationships that he has wired us for. I believe the devil will manipulate, and he'll make us think, especially when we get married. Well, we're married. We've got each other. We don't have to work at it anymore. And sometimes I don't, I don't even think we're aware of it. And unfortunately, whether it's spiritually, whether it's emotionally, we forget about what it was like when we were in the chase. Some of it, I think, is just because life happens. We get married, and then we combine our lives, and then we begin to live our life together, and maybe we finish school, and then we get jobs, and then you have kids, and this this is what happens. The chase becomes the race. And we find ourselves running like crazy, sometimes to the point that we're just trying to, to catch up. And we find ourselves going off the rails on the crazy train. We do. Men, I believe it's expected that we are to be the spiritual leaders for our wives and for our families. Now, this doesn't mean that they don't have their own personal responsibility when it comes to their spiritual growth. It doesn't mean that the family doesn't have input into the family's life together. It just means that we're going to love our family enough that we're going to live in such a way as Christ followers that when they see us, they want to follow Jesus because of the way they see us following Jesus. Does that make sense? You, you, You know what it means when you assume something, right? We'll use the King James Version, donkey. (laughs) We can't assume. Men... We, we talk here that, that a lot of times we, we've talked about how everything has to filter through us being a Christ follower. So like for me, I'm a Christ follower that happens to be a, a husband, a dad, and, and then a pastor. And I believe it has to go in that order. When you decide to follow Jesus, first and foremost, your life is about making him Lord. And so everything in your life, you give him lordship over. That's first. Second, if when you get married or even when you're dating, even I'd, I'd say even in your friendships, any kind of relationship, you give Jesus lordship over that relationship. And especially in a dating relationship, you're a Christ follower that happens to be in a dating relationship. So everything in that relationship, you give him lordship over. So I'm a Christ follower, happens to be a husband, a dad, and then a pastor, and then everything else. Everything has to filter through that. And if that's the case, then if it's going to be true of us, then we have to model Philippians chapter 2. Paul wrote this and he says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Question. Keep this in context here. All right. 
Jesus gave himself up. He emptied himself. He considered himself nothing. Why? So he could demonstrate his love for his bride, the church, for us. Question, husbands, is that how you love your wives? Do you do whatever it takes to make sure that your wife knows that she is loved, that she is beautiful? Are you willing to put her needs and her interests first to demonstrate how much you love her? And listen, we can take a step back from this and we can look at it in a dating relationship. If you're in a serious dating relationship, and we don't always think about this, but if you're in a dating relationship, guys, with a girl, you're dating, she may not be your, and I don't want to bring anything down here, she may not be your wife one day, but she may be somebody's. So are you treating her as your wife or somebody's wife one day? Especially if you're a Christ follower. But let's take it a step back. Do you put other people's needs above yourself in any relationship that you have? If you say that you love someone, do you put your needs before theirs? But especially in marriage, husbands, how do we demonstrate our love? Judd Wilhite, he wrote a book called Crazy Little Thing Called Love, and there's that word crazy again. He says, we should tell our wives we love them in the way we look at them, in the way we treat them. We need to tell her in front of her friends. Tell her you love her hair and the way she looks. Tell her she's your one and only. Tell her she looks like goats. No, he didn't say that, but um, (laughs) don't. And listen, gentlemen, this is what we are so guilty of, and it's wrong of us. I'm just going to tell you. Don't tell your wife you love her because you want to get to the end result of that. Because remember, the root of the the goal of every relationship, especially our marriage, is that we help each other follow Jesus. Because remember, we're Christ followers that happen to be married. We're Christ followers that happen to be in a relationship, whatever kind of relationship, friendship, otherwise, whatever relationship we're in, the goal is to help each other follow Jesus. We have to pull back from trying to fix her and listen more and try to be considerate when she's really upset. In order to resolve conflict and be united as a team, you're trying to use powerful words like, honey, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? It's not you and her. It's not me against her. It's not her against him. It's us. And sometimes we forget that. What that means, men, is that you are exerting effort to assure her of your love and commitment to until death do us part. That's not just some fancy thing that you say in a wedding. It's not something that's just supposed to be a part of it, and then we move on, and and 10 years later, well, she knows, you know, one of us is going to die, and we'll we'll get there. She knows I love her. She knows I'm committed, and it would help if you let her know that sometimes. Don't let her just assume. And, and if, if you're going to let her know, sometimes it takes effort. Because those of us who have been married for a while, this is not sounding bad, and I don't want to discourage anybody, but sometimes marriage is hard, and it's not always fun. And I don't say that to discourage anybody who's engaged right now and maybe getting ready to get married or you're thinking about it one day. Marriage is the most amazing thing you could ever experience. That's part of it. That's part of of showing that that unity together. But it's not the only thing. And and sometimes we have to make the effort to, to make sure that our wife or our husband, and especially men, we have to make sure our wives know that we're in this for the long run, no matter what. Because I believe so many marriages out there that ended in divorce, if there was better communication for some of them, not all of them, if there was better communication, some of those relationships would still be together today. And I know there's other circumstances and other things. I'm not trying to make light of if you've experienced divorce, I'm so sorry. And I know there's healing and there's forgiveness. And, but I just know that we live in a world today and all you got to do is look around. It's so easy. Well, it's hard. I'm just going to quit. And I don't say that light. It's just like, well, if you don't like it, I can just move on to the next one. 
And that's how the devil has been able to manipulate and make marriage not as important as it used to be. And you know what the world needs to see? The world needs to see some Christ-following men and women who are married, who are committed, and they're going to stick it out no matter what. What that means, men, is that you're viewing her as your equal before God, and you're honoring and treasuring her as first in importance to you. Remember, this is in the context of being a Christ follower. So if you are married, you are a Christ follower that happens to be a husband. And as a husband, you're going to love your wife as Christ loved the church. So you're going to put your needs aside and what her needs are are going to be more important than yours. You're going to look towards her interests and not just your own. And men, sometimes we don't do that. Because listen, it's awesome when we realize that we need to change something. But if we don't change it... Have we really acknowledged it? And men, humility is not something that comes easy for some of us. And we'll be just humble enough to say, yeah, I know, that's wrong. You doing anything about it? Well, no, but I know it's wrong. And she knows I know it's wrong, so we're good. Mm Mm-mm. It also mentions that the marriage relationship, in a sense, reflects the mystery of the gospel, how through Jesus, we can be in a relationship with God. But I love this. Even as it brings it back to the gospel, it doesn't let us forget the expectations for marriage. So you see, he says, it's a mystery. This is, the, this is Christ and the church, but he doesn't leave the context of marriage. Verse 33 However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Men, some of us, we love ourselves. Man, we love ourselves. I believe we have to start loving Jesus more and our wives more. Men, husbands today, those six things, begin to look at how you can make investments into your relationship. Start today by romancing your wife. Let her know that you love her. And specifically, husbands, what's one thing that you can begin to do to invest in your marriage? What's one thing? I know there's six there and you go, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do all, just one. What's one you can begin to do? That's where you start. Just pick one. Or maybe you begin by just trying to consistently tell your wife how much you love her, how beautiful she is, how thankful you are for her. Because maybe she's not heard it in a while. And maybe it's not been on purpose. You just try to jump back into the chase again. And who knows? Maybe chase her around the house. Maybe that, I don't know. (laughs) You're saying, that's crazy. Yeah. But we got to start today. By loving our wives. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video today and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can stay connected with what's going on with us at Regen. Make sure you invite a friend so they can be in touch. And hey, if nobody's told you, God loves you more than you could ever know and so do you.